Okay, so we're going to continue with some of the exponential modeling, and I showed you these in the previous video, so hopefully you've had a go at them yourself. And um, there's not many like this in the textbook. So it says a cup of hot tea was placed on a table. At time t minutes after the cup was placed on the table, the temperature in the cup, theta degrees centigrade, is modeled by this equation, where A is a constant. So just a quick couple of things to notice, it's in minutes and degrees centigrade. And it says the temperature of the tea was 75 degrees when the cup was placed on the table. So when it was placed on the table, the time is zero and the temperature was 75. When it says find a complete equation for the model, really what it's saying here is find the value of A. Because at the moment, it's not a complete equation because we don't know what A is. What is it? So we want to complete that. So I'm just going to take this information of that theta is 75 and t is zero, and I'm going to substitute it in. So I get 75 equals 25 plus a e to the minus 0 0.03 multiplied by zero. So I'm going to say 75 minus 25 equals a e to the zero. In other words, a is just equal to 50 because e to the zero is one. It then says, use the model to find the time taken for the T to cool from 75 degrees to 60 degrees, giving your answer in minutes to one decimal place. So it was 75 degrees to begin with. So I want to degree centigrade. So I want to find out what it was when it goes down to 60 degrees. Well, I guess, hang on a second. I probably should have written the complete equation. I should have said theta equals 25 plus 50 e to the minus 0.03 t. That's the, the complete equation for the model, not just find a. Now we're going to say that theta is 60. So we get 60 equals 25 plus 50 e to the minus 0.03 t. So I'll do 60 minus 25, and I'm going to divide that by 50, and that will give me e to the minus 0.03 t. So we'll do 60 minus 25, which is 35. I'll divide that by 50. So I get 0 0.7. 0 0.7 is e to the minus 0 0.03t. Now, if I do ln of both sides, I would have ln 0 0.7 equals ln e to the minus 0 0.03t. That ln and that e cancel. So effectively, it's just that minus 0 0.03. So I'm going to do ln of 0 0.7 equals minus 0 0.03t. So t is ln of 0 0.7 divided by 0 .03, minus 0 0.03. ln of 0 0.7 is definitely going to be negative. So this whole thing is going to be positive, which is good. So we'll do ln of 0 0.7 divided by minus 0 0.03. And we get that the time is 11.9 minutes. And they wanted that to one decimal place. It then says, two hours after the cup was placed on the table, the temperature of the tea was measured as 20.3 degrees centigrade. Using this information, evaluate the model explaining your reasoning. So they've said two hours. That's code for telling us what time is equal to. Now, time is not equal to two because the time here is being measured in minutes. Two hours is 120 minutes. So we're gonna find out what our model would predict and we'll make a comparison. So our model for part C, our model says the temperature would be 25 plus 50 e to the minus 0 0.03 times 120. So let's type this in. 25 plus 50 e to the minus 0 0.03 times 120, which is 26.4 degrees, 26.4 degrees centigrade. This is not close to 20.3 degrees. And so this is not a good model. In fact, we know something about this cup of tea. If the temperature is equal to 25 plus 50 e to the minus 0 0.03 times t, if you think about this as a graph transformation, this adding of the 25 has taken the asymptote that was previously here and it's lifted it up 
25 degrees. So we're saying that the temperature is always going to be above 25 degrees, according to our model. And if it's going all the way to 20.3, well, our model's not going to be able to deal with that. And that's what they also mentioned. But you don't need this bit here. The blue bit is perfectly fine. I just wanted to get you to think about what it's actually going to look like as a graph. So we got the 11.9 minutes. We found that A was 50. You had to write the whole equation out, so I wouldn't have got the mark if I didn't do that. And we probably went with this kind of one. We did this bit here. We said that 26.36, which is not close to 20.3, so it's not true for large values of T. We could just say um, it's, they wanted actually, that's interesting. They wanted it to say it relates to large values of T. I'm not sure that that's actually that obvious to say that it's large values of T. So we should say that the model, this is not, and so this is not good model for large values of T. But you know what? I think I probably would have dropped that mark. I don't think that's obvious that we're saying this about large values of T. So I don't know. Not very, not very clear. And it seems a bit mean that they would drop you a mark for that. OK, we're going to try one more. You've hopefully had a go at this one already. So now you can just check your answers. Um, let's have a look. So it says here that the value of um, V pounds of a vintage car T years invested on the 1st of January 2001 is modelled by this equation. V equals A P to the T, where A and P are constants. Given that the value of the car was 32,000 on January the 1st, 2005. Well, if this is in 2001, if this is T equals zero, this is four years later. OK, and the value is 50,000 pounds when T is 11. This is 11 years after this one. So it's going to be T is 11. We're going to try and find the value of P and the value of A. So I'm literally just going to take these bits of information. I'm going to take these two that I'm going to put in red and these two in black. And I'm going to try and sub them into the equation. So we get 3,200 equals AP to the power of 4. And then I get 50,000 is equal to AP to the power of 11. Now this is super sneaky. This is actually simultaneous equations. And there's many ways you could solve these simultaneous equations. But I think the way I'm going to go about this is I'm going to do, let's call this one, it's going to change my pen. If I call this one equation two and this one equation one, I'm going to do equation two divided by equation one. And what we would get is the left hand side would be 50,000 divided by 3,200. The right hand side would be AP to the power of 11 divided by AP to the power of 4. Well, the A's are going to cancel and the right hand side is going to simplify to P to the power of 7. The left hand side is going to be 50,000 divided by 3,200, which is 15.625. Now, if I want to find out what P is, I can do the seventh root of 15.625. So you can either type that in as a root or you could do it to the power as a seventh. I don't really mind what you do, but I am going to do the seventh root, or oh, I don't want that answer there. The seventh root of 15.625. Very, very sneaky, but P is 1.4810. Um, is that right? Did it want it to four decimal places? Yeah, 1.4810, because the nine makes that round up. Now we're going to try and find out what A is equal to. So I can now use either of these equations. So using equation one, 3200 equals A multiplied by P to the power of four. So A is going to be 3200 divided by 1.4810 to the power of 4. So I'm going to just do 3,200 divided by my answer to the power of 4. And why have I come up with that? Show that A is approximately 24,000. I feel like I've typed something in wrong at some point. 50,000, 3,000. Oh, I see what I've typed in wrong here. Hopefully you spotted this. This should have been 32,000. I knew I hadn't written something down right didn't seem to look like the right numbers. 
So let's just quickly fix this. This is 32,000. So this should have been 3,200. So let's just quickly fix this. Okay. So it's 50,000 divided by 32,000, which is 1.5625. Same as before though, we'll do the seventh root of 1.5625. So I'm gonna do the seventh root of 1.5625. And we get that P is 1.0658. And that's to four decimal places. Okay, we can correct this. It shouldn't take too long. So we've got 32,000 equals A times 1.0658 to the power of 4. So that's 32,000 divided by 1.0658 to the power of 4. So that's 32,000. Oh my god, too many zeros. Divided by the answer to the power of 4. Which is 24,000. 796.80, which is approximately equal to 24,800 pounds. Sorry about that mistake, but we did get that right answer here. With reference to the model, interpret the value of the constant A and the value of the constant P. Okay, so part B of the question, the equation is that the value is equal to 24,800 multiplied by P to the power of T. So we can tell this is what A is the initial price of the car. And P is the multiplier for the price change each year. i.e. it increases by 6.58% per year. And then part C of the question says find that using the model find the year during which the value of the car exceeds £100,000. So we're going to say now that the value of the car is going to be 100000 so I'm going to do 100,000 equals 24,800 multiplied by 1.0658 to the power of t. So I'll divide by 24,800. And then I'm going to find out what t is. Now I'm probably just going to take the log of this base, OK? So I'm going to say that the log of base 1.0658 that gives me 100,000 over 24,800 is going to be t. If you wanted to, you could have done the ln method. We could have said that the ln of 100,000 divided by 24,800 equals the ln of 1.0658t. Could have pulled that t down like this. That's my ln of blah, blah, blah over blah, blah, blah. And you could have divided them. So you could have had ln of blah, 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 divided by blah, 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 divided by ln of 1.0658. It's going to be the same thing. But I'm going to go with this blue method. So I'm going to do the log of 1.0658. Whoa. And then inside the brackets, it's going to be 100,000 divided by 24,800. And so t is equal to... 21.88 years. I don't know why I put dot, dot, dot after the years. And it says, using the model, find the year during which the value of the car first exceeds 100,000. So it exceeds, or it is 100,000. It's 100,000 pounds when t equals 21.88 years. When t equals 21, the year is 2022. Because look, 
when T is four, the year was 2005. When T was 11, it was 2012. It's always like one bigger than the number of T. So when T is 21, the year is 2022. And so it gets to 100,000 during this year. So it exceeds 100,000 during 2022 at the end of 2022 at 0.88 years. And 0.88 years is roughly 10 or 11 months. So it's gonna, it's gonna get there, 0.88 years. Why am I doing this now? It's making it silly. It's about 10 or 11 months. So it's gonna exceed it, exceed it in like October, November time. Okay, let's check that we got this all right. So we've got the value of P eventually, the value of A. We've got the initial value of the car. Probably should have said, the initial price of the car on January the 1st, 2001. We've got the factor it's rising or 6.6% a year. We got this bit and this bit here as well. Okay, so quite a long videos on these and some pretty difficult questions, but these are all real exam questions here. Okay, we're gonna do a few more on the next bit, which is about coming up with your own exponential model.